My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Monster Train where it's time to play some Vildleton, the exiled champion in the Awoken with a random clan. It's our secondary, Covenant 25, the standard. Let's go, go, go. Awake, two steel enhancers and two makings of Morsel. We have Seraph the Chaste, so we're probably not going to want to focus too much on that region. Uh, Arcus, Darknet, uh, Darkness Incarnate with the Incant and Rally as well as Daedalus the Professor with Constructed Explosives exploding twice. Okay, so we do need a Frontliner. I mean, Frontliner or Quick Wildleton with the I mean, Plinks are going to have us. Plinks are going to be good for us as well. We've got two making for Morsel. Hmm. 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 Interesting. There's a lot of potential here. I'm just going to take the Precious Plating. Just for the extra 40 here. Maybe it'll help me take some extra challenges early. Possibly get some extra money. Maybe bankroll that into getting something something super worthwhile. So this is quick. And with its enchant, it grants quick to everyone else on the floor. It gets multi-strike as it upgrades, right? That's a really good... Like, that could be even a target just to put the making of the morsel, the root seeds and the steel enhancer on and try and buff heavily enough supplement with spells starter bell enemy units appear on each floor so honestly with the plinks in the deck we'll probably lose a little bit of hp here but especially having just gained 40 extra it's not gonna be too dire okay plank him vildleton with a steel enhancer lock five with a rubble morsel Five with the rubble morsel, and then get the one there, there too. And I'll set up two strains, train suits on the top line for taking out some of the following. Nice! We did manage to get the back line there, and then we can blink the top line as well. Perfect. So, lifesteal, damage shields. I guess we just buff Wildleton to the point that they win by themselves, kind of. Sack those two rubble morsels on the bottom floor. Don't have to draw them next turn or return later. Uh-oh. Oh, just oh, the exact worst place. Uh, worst case scenario for us. Hopefully we get to... No, we're not going to have the ability to do anything to it here, are we? Rough, so we take another seven. Could be a lot worse, at least. Easy kills here, though. I want the root seeds and the morsel master, morsel maker, rather, to all get cost reduced. So I wouldn't be surprised if I went out to the left in order to try and achieve that. Sting, the extra draw. I like stealing hunter. I like the fact that we got a couple of them. Yeah, especially as we're going to be getting multi strike later, it's going to be significantly more powerful for us. Base rhythm is pretty much always reasonable. A couple more zero costs in the deck helps me. Because all the root seeds are going to draw an extra one next turn, right? So as I upgrade them, I'm going to have more cards in my next hand. So having more zero cost cards means that I'm more likely to be able to end up playing out the rest of the hand. Um, I do like the idea of going for this Umbra unit, though. Is that what I do right now? Because I could also just go Awoken and a Merchant of Steel in the next area. Go for as many upgrades as I can possibly get here. Try and try and get away with that. Sure. Let's see what we can do. So plus twenty in magic power on a blink. Cost reduction on a root seeds reroll. Roll stack. Yeah, nothing I really want to talk with that. Plus twenty on a blink. Negative one on a muscle master, and then we'll bounce. That's going to make a lot of our hands significantly smoother, I feel. No more enemies enter with three spikes. Shouldn't be too bad again. Probably want to set up Vildleton on the top floor here. Really? Yeah, just pop Vildleton on the top floor for the possibility of killing a... Collector. 
Unfortunately, the collect is not in the location I wanted. Uh, oh, never mind. We do get it with the plink. Oh, beautiful there. Okay. Space Rhythm, get a Morsel Miner. Pop all of these into you. Give you the extra stat and another Root Seed. All right, now feeling pretty comfy about all of this. Looks like we'll take no extra damage as a result of having decided to go for this. Um, guess we double plink on this floor for the possibility of killing the backliner, which we managed to get. I accidentally use up the space with the wrong character there. Thankfully, it really doesn't matter. Bopped him. Decent amount of money for a future upgrade. Pyagro. Draw negative two next turn and uh, plus one cost for the rest of the battle. I like it. Especially with the root seeds. Rust Mold Dust. Immortal Trade. Immortal Trade doesn't seem bad. Immortal Trade seems like a reasonable way to try and get Wildleton to live forever. Oh, no, 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 no. Seraph the Chase. I'm not going to be able to stack it that high gonna be fine for everything except for the Sarah the Chase, but the thing is we're also going to be able to kind of be fine for everything except for the Sarah the Chase. And we'll pass that up. So we're looking for a, a sweeper over here. Ideally the 530 would be a good sweeper for us. Okay, well there's the Shattered Shell as well as Anonymous of Will. Putting the Shattered Shell in front of Vildleton would be so good. Gives us some really good scaling. Heck, it doesn't even have to be in front of Vildleton. Not in every fight, at least. I, it's just I don't want to give it large stone. But I do want to give it large stone. Ouch. No, I don't want any of those either, I don't think. When I say I don't want any of those, I will have to settle for one of them, though, still. Uh, sure. I can carry those around for two battles at this point, probably. I'm probably at a peak in my early power level here. So the constructed explosives explode twice here, but they will always be slept, uh, swept away, rather. So, build a turn. Shadow Shell in the front line. Buff you and then plink on this line literally just to perfect get a rubble morsel which will then eat get an extra energy for the next turn it's probably not going to be and in fact it is definitely not relevant here but oh well not exactly too much of a concern for us okay just going to set these up for a possible second floor unit We have the ability to put the Morsel Miners on the bottom floor. I'm going to completely abandon that previous... Uh, Fortress Eyeball, why? <laughs> I'm not going to be able to remove that, so... Oh, well. Could be a lot worse. I would love Cycle of Life here, so that I can start just giving the Shattered Shell health during the battle. It seems like that'd be pretty helpful. Oh. But that's Furnace Tap, and Furnace Tap is multi strike. Mm. What do we got in the next area? Hersel Sword, Unstable, Forgotten, Hellvent. Okay, Forgotten, Hellvent are on the same side. What would I even be Hellventing at this point? I don't know, maybe a Pyagro. Probably not. Would I be hellventing here? Or would I be going to the Pyromains, Hersel Sword, and Unstable? Probably Pyromains, Hersel uh, Sword, and Unstable. Oh, uh, but that's my last opportunity to get an Umbra Banner to... to support with all of the morsels I'm going to be creating. Build a second floor that way. Hmm. 
fine. Well, that Crucible Collector is, is, is yeah, like, I, I just settle for that and I don't go for the Umbra Banner. I go on the other side again now. Uh, so do I need capacity? That'd give me the ability to put a large stone on a Shattered Shell, which isn't bad. But legitimately, like, draw is so powerful when I am making so much of my deck zero cost. Yeah, definitely can't take the the stolen gauge. I'll take the thorn fruit here, but this is also going to be a problem for us because now we don't want extra draw. We want capacity or energy. Um, let's make our first cycle significantly better by cutting these train stewards. Okay, you can see we get the sweep and strangler here, but we also get multi strike in the predator, and we already have the sweep taken care of on that floor. Start battle, enemy units appear on each floor. That's totally okay with me. Especially if we get a plink in the opening turn, we just are fine. Yeah, we are. Cool. So let's go Vildleton, Shattered Shell, plink the top line, hit it with a stab, and then Crucible Collector. Double up. Gotta love a good morsel miner there, and then double root seeds. As soon as the frontliner here is just consistently taking down the chumps, as it is now doing, then I'm gonna start buffing the backliner because the buffliner, uh, the backliner is doing a multi-attack, so it's benefiting multiple times over from any extra damage I put into it. Whereas the shattered shell is also doing a form of multi-attack in a sweep, but is not going to do extra damage now that it's already doing enough to kill targets. So, especially against the boss, the like against the floor, the scaling for the Shattered Shell is now done. The boss scaling is in the Willowton. I think is probably the best way to describe that. Okay, there's the Furnace Tap. I think I use it. I think I just pop it now. I lost four energy this turn, but we're still totally A-OK. -okay. Hmm. Three, I guess? Yeah, three, but I didn't have the extra energy generation. Okay, cool. Uh, that makes sense. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly give them all the business. There is a Merchant of Trinkets upcoming and we just picked up a absolute treasure trove. Engraft. Is Engraft worth anything to us? No? Is Pyagra? No, because I end up with a lot of zero costs. And I'm also drawing extra pretty much every turn. This gives me the ability to take high cost things like a gem trove, for instance. Okay. <laughs> Into it. Get all the calcified embers as well. Uh, some really good spell upgrades we could have, but there's also a bunch of thorn fruit, uh, specifically sting upgrades that we could have at this point. That would be lovely. Plus two capacity on the middle floor. So if I'm setting up a middle floor, that gives me the ability to put Vildleton there, as well as the Shattered Shell, as well as another unit, possibly. Okay, take that, re-roll. Units get an extra upgrade slot. Put that on a... on a Shattered Shell, get it to scale a little better. Start a turn at a Commodore and Common Morsel into your hands. Yeah, having a Morsel every single turn, I think, is some good support right now. Honestly, I don't know if that was as powerful as I could have gotten on the other side. Okay. So this is one of the situations where I definitely need my sweeper in front of Vildleton, despite the health disparity. Because the 
Sweeper needs to take out all of the sycophants, and then Wilderton needs to hit the backliner. Hmm. I don't know if I plink for two morsels here. In fact, I don't think I plink for two morsels here. I want the slays. Way more important. Gosh, do we run out of... Yeah, we, we do run out of the furnace stab right now, I think. We have the ability to just uh, excavate an ember through following turns. Pyre grows at good draws. Gem Trove, we're not playing the first cycle anyway, probably. Hmm. Play that on a different floor. And you know what? I'm even going to blink consume it out of the deck. Magma Morsel, buff you two times, throw away a Sting on a different floor. Yeah, that's... That's exactly what we wanted. Pyre grow, pyre grow. We'll draw. We'll draw. A sting. Um, Gem Trove? Looks real good right now. And then I'm going to throw out a Root Seeds as well as Train Steward. I don't want that in the next cycle. And the Root Seeds so that I actually draw a reasonable amount of cards this turn. Because otherwise it's going to be pretty underwhelming. Okay. Sting for the takedown. Need to use a... Morsel Miner on this floor to make sure the Shattered Shell lives through a single barrage of attacks there. I am now very nervous, realizing that it doesn't, uh... Uh-oh. Yeah, that's... <laughs> this, this, this floor is not close to where it needs to be. Uh-oh. Okay, well, Shattered Shell sweeps anyway, so the Sycophant... Killing a Sycophant in the back line is not good here. Doesn't actually help. Thankfully, this is exactly what the top line is, like, 100% built for, so we're going to be completely fine, but... Uh, it, it does reveal that this primary floor I built did definitely have some some weaknesses, some, some exploitable spots. Just glad, again, not to have to worry about it, because... This top floor is just absolutely rocking this boss. Could have done that 15 more times. Um, ooh, invigorating solution. I'm not going to be taking energy for the next draw anyway. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to be taking... Uh, I will be taking capacity, right? I'm not going to be taking draw. Did I take energy? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to be taking with my next one. Give me a grain solution, still useful though. Specifically to play it on the worst turns. Um, another gem trove? Okay. Tell you what, right now, and though I need some minion upgrades, you need that extra health desperately. Roll, multi strike. Multi strike can't go on the lifesteal. It'd be kind of tragic, unfortunately. Just give you the plus 10 instead. Ooh, at the start of the turn, front-friendly units on each floor gain 5. Love the Emblem of Exiles. It is so powerful. One of the new relics, I believe it is the new Awoken specific relic. Okay, cool. Let's go for Darkus. This is good. But yeah, uh, the, the multi-strike on the life stealer would have used two multi-strike every turn, so it's just rough. Uh, or it would have used two life steal every turn that it tried to multi-strike. Vilderton, pop a shaft shell in front. I can I can rally you on the top floor happily, right? Do I have a problem with that? Non-morsel units on that floor apply the, uh, apply the daze anyway, so it doesn't matter. I just can totally. Then, do I want to just sting the boss? Yeah, because I want as many slay triggers on the other floor, so sting the boss, Pyro. Okay. 
Um, guess this floor's fine for the Excav Ember. Again. Hmm. Do I throw that? That no. Because I am I'm gonna need space for the, the gem troves. Let's definitely just go double damage on this one. Help it scale just a touch faster. Whether or not it needs it, completely different question, but I can help it scale faster. <clears throat> Okay, we're probably going to have a bad time with the Clip Reflector right here, but I, I need to take this opportunity to get five buffs out, because otherwise later I might just have an Incant Shard on this floor. In fact, I'm probably about to have an Incant Shard on this floor, so then I just don't get to cast spells that turn, so I need to take advantage while I can. Seems good to me. And yep, they left an incant shard there and then left. So good thing I now have the ability to focus on a different floor. Unfortunately, uh looks like this different floor could also buff that flipped reflector too much. So I've got to be careful not to. Make the morsel on a different floor, pop it here. And then... Hmm. Sixty, sixty. We take down the Clipped Guardian before it ever attacks. So I'm going to double Root Seeds you. You get extra damage, but they get out of my hand before I play this here. So I do trigger another Encamp, but I don't... The Looming Dark Shard isn't going to Encant anything to cost too much. And I also get two extra draw next turn, which is very important. There's our Furnace Tap. Gosh. Is it going the Frontliner now? No, because the Frontliner is going to be killed before the, the Backliner is. So ultimately against the boss, it's going to matter if it's on the Backline. unfortunate amount of energy this turn, but looks like we are going to be able to manage it very effectively. Making more soul needs to go on the top floor still. Alright. This is the final wave. So, let's see how it went. five more health on this floor. I think I've been under utilizing the ability to just add extra health on that floor with the Morsel Masters. Okay. Another Morsel Liner. Add out. Nice! Looks like it kind of paid off in full. And also, you know, we had another unit on the top line that was ready to finish the fight. So let's think about this, right? You got two damage shields on you. Let's just ignore those because you're going to life steal back, right? So let's just imagine you had uh, 117 health and 11 life steal. 25, you hit them back. 25, you hit them back, right? So you get to hit them uh, effectively 11 times for free for 540 damage. And then another four times for another 200. So this is definitely not, like, my primary boss-killing floor, but it doesn't really have too many qualms doing it. Mmm, I worry about that, though. How much more is this going to scale with just, like, faster execution? Oaken Rail Spike? Yeah, if that reduces the cost of a gem trove or anything like that, or, you know, any of the other root seeds in the deck, yeah, it's super valuable. Capacity? Energy? 
Maybe it's energy, so that if I do draw a gem trove early, I can just play it. If I draw a Woken Rail Spike early, I can just play it. Be happy about it. How many times am I floating extra... Uh, extra uh, morsels that I can't play? More commonly, once I start reducing other cards from the deck. How many other cards am I going to reduce from the deck? Not that many. Maybe it's extra draw. Hit my excavated embers really early. Hit my uh, my pyre groves really early. Use that to just supplement. Okay. All draw all the time. This would be so good with a single incant unit. Yeah, bases are full in terms of our upgrades on our minions, so we're going to be going over the other side. Let's check the Merchant of Magic first. Double stack plus 10, 1. <clears throat> Spells with Consume have a good chance to be discarded instead. Obviously, Awoken Rail Spike and the Excavated Embers. And Furnace Tap! Uh, Invigorating Solution. Yeah, all of these are pretty good ones to get back, I think. So, take the Wing Clinkings happily there. Do we really need Furnace Tap to do that? Because if Furnace Tap does that, that is the last thing I can play. Right? Do I need a last thing I get to play? Sometimes that'll be enough. While we've done that, though, it suddenly becomes way more important to have a couple things in the deck just be zero cost by themselves. Hold over. Um, probably not. Yeah, I guess I'm going to reduce the cost of root seeds, I think. I mean, I could take the plus 20. Put that on another consume. I guess that's probably the right thing to do. Let's have a look at the Dark Forge upgrade. Ooh, sweeper's back. But I think in order to scale for the bosses, we need to go for Predator 3 here. All right. No more enemies enter with Spikes 5. Yikes. Yikes, right? We have a lot of multi-strike. We're going to be taking a ridiculous amount of damage. <sighs> Yikes. If that was spell shields, no problem. Armor, probably also no problem. This, terrifyingly sad. Uh, we need to set up on the bottom floor, I think, just to make sure that the purifiers don't really mess us up too much. I shouldn't have done a plank. Okay. Extra morsels on the next floor, which is to set up the Crucible Collector being summoned. Start out with the Sting, just for the money. God, I like the idea of just burning the the furnace tap right now and get the Wildleton buffed. Really bad? That sounds really bad, actually. That floor at least dies by itself. <clears throat> Yikes. Forty-one by five. Yeah, I, I am, I have to. Okay. Have this supplement some extra energy next turn. 
you another buff. Pyro, give you another buff. Uh, most of those cards are already zero cost, so the idea of using the Awoken Rail Spike to get them doesn't seem that appealing. Let's just double buff you. Lost my Sweeper on the bottom line. <laughs> I'm very nervous about this now. I can prevent 10 damage with an Entumber in the front line. Seems good enough to me. Yeah, trying to set up on the bottom so that I could kill the Purifiers really quickly, I think has been a mistake. I do have another furnace tap here, and if I ever get to play that, oof. Then we're off to the races. Um, it's just I strongly suspect I won't. Okay, then a few. Draw. A few again. Wait, hang on. This is the this is the wall. Yeah, you grow big. You don't start big. You grow big. We should be fine. Don't get to play any of these gem troves, but here we go. Woof. All right. At least that went okay. Another Preserved Thorns? Another Pyagra? <laughs> Wildwood Custodian by itself on a different floor? Uh, probably none. Void Binding. Reduce its cost. Run with all Ember Drain. Okay. There's no other minion upgrades I want on the other side, so... Makes my choice pretty easy. Holdover cost reduction on a Void Binding. No! Yeah, Seraph the Chase is gonna halve it! Fifty percent chance to apply days whenever an enemy unit enters your train. If we set up on the bottom floor, it's only a two-thirds chance I would even be able to do that. But if we set up on the bottom floor, it'd be nice. Chain of gems could let me chump block with a bunch of my well morsels, or I could re-roll and look for a sting relic. We'll take the chain of gems. What if we put another Shattered Shell in the middle floor? Is that the solution? Two Shattered Shells? It is another buffer. I can't put the Crucible Collector like out front on the bottom. Uh, on, on the middle, if we were doing something like that, because it's just lifesteal, front target. Uh... Is it just another valuable zero cost card? Plus 10, another plink. And... I mean, we'd still play that. Yeah, zero cost of root seeds, I think. The dupe's the hardest part. Making of a morsel is looking really good to me right now.
All right. Let's see what we can get done here. It's a shame it's the, the Chase Seraph. I did know that from the outset, though, so... It's not like it was suddenly sprung on me. Okay. So it's... Sting top line easily, then... Vildleton goes out front here instead of the Shattered Shell, right? Seraph the Chase. I don't think there are Wilt Wings in this fight. I might not want to do it like that, actually. Because if the... So if Vildleton goes out front and eventually gets big enough, I'm destroying everything with Vildleton before the Shattered Shell even has a look-in to try and scale. So I want to give it the opportunity to scale first. Okay. I'm not... I'm not, like, undoing an action because I got a bad draw or anything like that. I have no additional information. I'm just reordering those two units. So, pop the Shadow Shell there. Definitely want to give it the damage shield if I'm going to be doing that. Let's Pyre Grow, but take some extra. Hmm. Let's go Plink you for the damage. Neat. Okay, extra capacity probably actually wants to go on this floor right now. The Crucible Collector should be a little bit more important for the sake of the Seraph the Chaste. Sorry, Crucible Collector. I'm, I'm not used to it. <laughs> I'm just not used to it yet. Okay. I mean, I guess I'm done. That train steward gone. Oh God, I really hope I have the ability by the end of this to kill that pie wings before it attacks us. Love morsel mining on that top floor, though. Um. Okay. Yeah, we'll use that. Ooh, double gem trove! Double gem trove in the same turn? Hell yeah. Uh, no, I shouldn't use double gem trove in the same turn. It's it's extra... It's, it's extra damage shields, but the only problem is I don't have the ability to utilize all of them. You need more health on you. More damage on you. Okay. Are we good? Is that it? Yeah, just a little bit of damage to the front line and to the boss. This this two big dudes floor that we are currently looking at is going to be probably the worst one for us. Just quickly jam those down as well. Uh, working rail spike now. Hey, it hits a furnace tap, which. The furnace tap. Oh, I was about to say the furnace tap may end up getting cycled back in, but no. Of course, I don't have the energy for it. Ah oh, well, guess I'm just gonna hope to try and draw it soon. Perfect. Okay, we managed to get the top liner down. Also getting six energy a turn now. Woken Rail Spike is also back in the deck. Oh my god. A lot of this is going extremely well. Yeah. 
Let's get as many things as I can. Make as many of them zero cost. More morsel miners, basically for free. Oh, that's perfect. We we now play the burner snap as soon as we draw it. Heck, we probably even play the void binding. Do I? Yeah, I, I think I think it's time to it's time to make that transition. In fact, I don't think we have any more time past this point to choose whether or not we make that transition. So, Let's take the opportunity as it is presented to me. There we are. Furnace tap. Pop you on that. I'm working rail spike draws. What at this point? I have to at least play one gem trove, right? I should have been chump blocking with this way more often. I got caught up looking at the other loops of things that we were going to be doing. Okay. There. Again, pop an extra root seeds out. All right. I mean, it's significant. It's extremely significant. Let's see. Uh, let's see how far we can can get from here. That's almost dead. I mean... Yep, we did it. I knew you were gonna matter! <laughs> oh, perfect. Get dunked. And that is our first Awoken Vildleton win Covenant 25 on the main series. Uh, with the Umbra Exiled Clan as our secondary. Good run! Very, very pleased with that one. There's definitely a little bit of sloppy play in a couple different situations. Uh, a couple of chump blocks that I obviously could have done, especially in the final fight when I had the ability to give Morsels the uh, plus two damage shield. Uh, I feel like the, 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 the Furnace Tap was essential. It didn't feel like it felt like it fit in that deck but it was 100% required. I was not going to have the scaling to kill the boss without it. Ooh. This, uh, this collection's starting to look pretty dang complete. 25s across the board. 25s and a 24 right there. 25s and a 19. 25s, 17, 13. Lowest is my Melting Remnant Stygium, which actually makes a lot of sense. There's not too much that... Uh, there are things that you can do with those two clans together, but... Compared to other clan combinations, not as much. You can see 19 here. It's reflected on the other side also. It feels like a lot of the time when I end up with Stygian, uh, Melting Remnant and Stygian Guard, I have to go either Stygian Guard or Melting Remnant. Um, again, not to say that there aren't ways to join the two of them together, but that uh, I, I, I find those harder to put together and have more moving pieces, I guess, than other clan combinations. Obviously, we've also got those two mastered cards left to go in both the clanless and Umbra, and then the 19 expert challenges. 
But now that we're back on a kind of pace right now, the uh, the good old one a day kind of pace, shouldn't be too terrifyingly sad or uh, or difficult to get. For the moment though, let's go to the run summary screen. Quick applied, 168 previous best six. <laughs> For the moment though, my name is Rhapsody. The name of the game is Monster Train. There is a playlist in the description down below with all of my content on this game, past, present, and your best believe future. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.